in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Take your place, 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 take your place. Take your place, sing it to him. Jena na na de na baria, Jena na na mo so na na baria da da, Jena na 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 mo se na na baria. Take your place, take your place. Oh 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 oh. Come on, lift your hands and worship His Majesty. Just the voices. It's a chant in the spirit. It's a call for the heavens to revive and transform and heal and bless. receive this song this song has been a chord for me in the spirit there's something about receiving specific songs for seasons there are many songs by the grace of God that we have received in this place but there's just a strange anointing upon this song it's, it's like a call and response it compels something within you to respond to the heavens I've tried and tried to stop singing this song, but it will not leave. It's a chant in the spirit. It does something to my spirit. It does something to my spirit. Yeah. 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 Help us worship him.
just sing it one more time. All the instruments, our voices, and our hands lifted. Yeah. Help me worship team. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy. Just the voices. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy. Worthy is the Lamb. Take my body, my soul, my spirit. Breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, my spirit. Breathe on me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. at your table I have come to feast at your table we have come to draw strength tonight strength for the journey ahead Shena na mo cha na Maria na wala na basi na dunia. Hallelujah. Spirit of the Living God, we ask you tonight, invade our lives. Do something remarkable in our lives tonight. Turn our lives around. Turn our lives around. Turn our lives around. Turn our lives around. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please be seated. Good evening, everyone. Your life will never be the same. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I welcome everyone once again. We have a lot to do tonight. And we're trusting God to be able to go so far. Every moment in his presence. Let me tell you one of the reasons why 
the presence of God should be greatly desired. In his presence, there is not only liberty. In his presence, there is wisdom. In his presence, there is understanding. It's in his presence he reveals to us the mystery behind the happenings in our lives. And he shows us the system. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Apologize for that. Praise the Lord. Tonight's teaching is going to bless us in no small way. I like our hearts to really, really be opened. The Lord wants to speak to us by the power of his spirit. Hallelujah. The Lord put something in my spirit that I'd like us to write down that I think will be very important and it will set the pace tonight. Um, there are so many people outside. As we always say, you are part of us. And um, I know that the Lord brought you to bless you and do not let distance distract you. I see people standing with something to write. I want you to know we really appreciate the sacrifice. And um, this that you are doing will speak in your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. You see, when God gave man the mandate to dominate, the word dominion means sovereign control. Sovereign control. And every religion every movement promises one thing dominion the fear of man has been his inability to completely control certain situations and circumstances please i want you to listen the things we cannot control are the things that bring fear to our lives so people fear poverty for instance because of um, an effect it seems to be able to bring to our lives and we cannot do anything about it we fear death we fear guns because we think they can do something to us we fear failure because it does something to us every time man is unable to control a process it brings fear it brings a sense of subjugation so every movement that has come through history and civilization promises to lead man to a pathway where we'll be able to access dominion but we know that there is no true dominion and authority outside of christ in genesis 126 the bible says and elohim said let us make man in our own image it says let them have sovereign control dominion hallelujah what what is happening to you here every time is the process that will bring you into true dominion i told us again and again that dominion is not a wish dominion is not an impartation dominion is a reaction something happens to your life that leads to an end called dominion hallelujah write this down something i do not know is responsible for the limitation in my life write this down something i do not know is responsible for the limitation in my life something i do not know is responsible I said for you to write it this way so that every time you are reading it you can personalize it and it can create the effect that will birth change something i do not know is responsible for the limitation in my life the second thing i want you to write is this something i am aware of but have not believed is also responsible for my limitation something i am aware of but have not believed is responsible for my limitation there is something i am aware of there is an information a revelation 
I am aware of. I'm not ignorant of it. I'm aware of it. But my refusal to believe it has brought limitation to my life. Number three. Something I have believed but have not consistently acted upon is also responsible for my limitation. Something I have believed but have not consistently acted upon underline consistently acted upon something i have believed but have not consistently acted upon is also responsible for my limitation these three factors have limited us in no small way something we do not know is responsible for the limitations in our lives two something we know and information we have come across but we have not chosen to believe is also responsible for the limitations in our lives number three something we have believed but have not consistently it may be that you have acted upon it but you have not consistently acted upon see the danger is that any of these three categories will produce the same result see how frustrating it is are we together now so we have three people here one who is completely ignorant and he's not even aware he's ignorant his miracle starts when he's aware that he's ignorant not even when the solution comes the awareness that you need help is already deliverance in itself let me tell you how satan destroys people he keeps you in ignorance are we together now and he closes every door that can even make you aware you are ignorant that's the first person his end is predictable number two is the one who is he's not ignorant he's had access to the information that can change him or her but the person has refused to believe you see i found out that it's not what you hear that changes you it's what you choose to believe and live by so this person here has all the information has read all the books has gone for all the seminars comes for koinonia every week and you will think that he would produce certain kinds of results right the third person not only is not ignorant not only has believed but has refused to consistently act now the terrible thing is you would think the first two should be better than the first person but their results will all come out the same hallelujah that's why the interesting thing about god is when you start working with him you have to go all the way to see your progress you can't take two steps with god and expect you will see any remarkable progress you've had you, you've got to go all the way and then you will see that there is progress tonight i want to teach on strategic kingdom influence strategic kingdom influence this teaching will bless you it will change your life strategic kingdom influence i want to teach us a major tool for kingdom advancement in the 21st century strategic kingdom influence one of the please look up especially those of us who are pastors ministries fellowships and groups i think i was uh, i don't know if it was the school of ministry students we were having a discussion yesterday and i was telling them a true shepherd listen please a true shepherd must build people intentionally there's no lecturer who comes to the lecture hall guessing what he thinks the students should become are we together every lec the students don't even know what they should become many times a few may know but the lecturer is only a lecturer because he is privy to an information he knows what the students should become if they diligently stay under his tutelage when jesus came he knew what he wanted the disciples to become he wanted them to become apostles envoys advocates of his ideology 
and he knew exactly what to do it's a terrible thing when a pastor is confused about the path of spiritual progress of the members meaning that he doesn't really know what builds the people he's hoping and sadly i say this and i'm challenging especially those of us who are men of god you don't sit down and just guess what to teach people on saturday night or sunday early in the morning you just think and say Kai, what have i not talked about character people are misbehaving in my church you now run a hammer on character and then you find out that uh, people need to learn on miracles and then you go and teach on miracles your growth will not be constructive every pastor ought to develop people in five areas number one their spiritual lives these are just um, additions that i think i should communicate before we go into our discussion tonight number one our spiritual life any pastor any leader that cannot guide the people god has committed to him to really know god to come to a point where they can hear the voice of god to come to a point where they conform to the image of the Christ. To come to a point where the average member is passionate about the things of the kingdom. No matter what else you teach people. If you don't bring them to a point of addiction and love and passion for God. Then they are not growing. Hallelujah. Yes. Where they seek his face where they love him genuinely not where they use him where they love him so that's the first area and that involves them being born again not just being healed they have to be saved pastors make sure the congregation of the people you are leading among other things and before other things their salvation is secured i don't care what else happened in that church if the people are not saved they are not growing praise the lord they must be saved and established in righteousness where your members become people of conviction let me tell you something i have seen congregations where the level of revelation that comes from the preacher to them is very low but i respect those congregations because the little the man of god knows he has brought his members to a point of conviction i'm irritated by an assembly that does not have values spiritual convictions it's better to be wrong about something so that even when you change you know what you left not that you are there today you think divine healing is scriptural tomorrow you are not sure today you think prosperity is good and then your man of god comes and him too he's not sure there are times you see pastors oscillating you go for a conference and hear something and you come back ship it to your congregation and teach them only for you to grow two weeks later and find out that you wouldn't have brought that revelation that way and then the members are hearing a lot of things but they are not growing hallelujah number two every true shepherd must be able to build people's finances i'm absolutely convinced that a man of God who does not pay attention to the financial well-being of his congregation is not only a wicked man of God. He's not only a wicked man of God, but he's a dangerous man of God. You know why? Because the Bible says where your treasure is, that's where your heart will. If you want to get the heart of a congregation focused towards God, there are certain things in their lives that can really become distractions. There is no how you want a man to serve God, lie down, you want him to give you three or four or five hours of his life, whereas he knows that his rent is due. Are we together now? And then it is also wicked. Honestly, this is my proposition. I think it is really wicked. For a man of God to stand up and then say, oh, how many people are going to give one, one million naira? I was telling the school of ministry students. And then you have people come out and then they are, they, are, they are offering. Now, I don't care whether the church is using their offering or not. These people give offerings every week. Even if it's five naira, it left them. Is that true? They pay their tithe. And then the minister of the gospel in turn is not empowering them. And so they are broke, 
their failures in their offices they are at the lower levels they can't do nothing they don't have options they've not grown to a point where they can be able to say look i can i want to go to church somebody cover for me no influence sometimes we we teach what we call a replacement theology where we can use one dimension of the kingdom to replace the need for another it doesn't exist is error and a man of god can be so bold in error and mislead people many pastors who don't pay attention to the finances of their members are doing well themselves they are doing well because they are offering spiritual value and the members sow into their lives the members maybe pay their rent some of the pastors collect salary so i can teach you all kinds of things and immediately after the service my dinner is secured i'm going to go and eat but will you eat a good shepherd does not march on his sheep he lays down his life for his sheep you see this is why many congregations are um, is a beehive of frustrated people there are issues people have that will not allow them to grow number three every true shepherd should teach people and guide them along the area of excellence in leadership how to excel career wise how to excel family wise every church every congregation is a unit of family you cannot have an irresponsible father a very wicked mother come to a church what do you think that bad father will become as a hod he would translate his understanding about fatherhood and that's what he's going to use to lead the department are we together now every arm robber came from somewhere he didn't fall from a tree are we together every prostitute or harlot came from somewhere all those who are making a mess of society came from family and a platform like this the church is an institution that influences the mindset of people gives them very very scriptural perspectives on leadership how do you excel in your place of work it matters to god how do you excel in your endeavor it matters to god how do you excel in your business how do you do it right number what now Number four, every pastor must teach his congregation on principles of relationships. Relationships are everything in this kingdom. Your breakthrough comes through relationships. The tragedy in your life comes through relationships. Jesus understood this. He didn't, he didn't play with relationships. We lose opportunities because we do not know how to master relationships. We lose destiny helpers. Money is not everything as important as it is. One ability to maximize a quality relationship will give you what one billion will not give you. Relationships. hallelujah number five every pastor must be able to teach his congregation how to be agents of national transformation every pastor must be able to teach his member life applicable teachings teachings they can take outside of the confines of the church back to society and begin to shape cultures and change systems with it listen let me tell you the churches that command influence in every territory are the churches whose impact are felt even sociologically it's not just by buying rice or giving people sewing machine or or you know uh, buying pot or killing cow those things are important 
but it's not just about doing things it's about institutionalizing a mindset within a territory so the church becomes noted everybody within that territory benefits there are so many people benefiting from koinonia the national union of road transport workers are benefiting rental services benefiting mtn glow airtel benefiting are we together now there are many people who may not be christians but will fight to protect the continuity of koinonia because they can see how it translates to the well-being of their own lives so you build people intentionally you don't just sit down and say i got up and i think i feel like saying this today and then people jump and then at the end of the service you ask the people what did you gain and the person tells you honestly me too i don't know but my my spirit picked something you are not going to grow that way i assure you did you know did you know that i've taught us here it's not your intention that becomes your reality but your conviction you want to be great but something about your belief will limit you you want to be greatly anointed but there is something you must know i'm telling you you will thank me in the years to come for this truth in the name of jesus christ i'm chasing after you no matter what i have to do i need you more and more i'm chasing after you no matter what i have to do i need you more and more more and more more and when you grow spiritually and otherwise it becomes there is something there is a name god gives this kind of people he calls them a delightsome land you know what it is like a delightsome a likable personality something about your transition in the spirit creates an effect in this realm and so you are well desired well desired I was telling the school of ministry um, students yesterday that the project this project you see called koinonia the benefit of koinonia will be experienced in the next 10 to 20 years not now hallelujah my target is people from ages 0 to 45 outside 45 you can join but the target that that generation of individuals is what we want to target in the next 20 years many people you see now 70 years etc in business in politics no matter how they want to hold on to power many of them would have transited it will now be our turn hallelujah so it's a project just like satan destroyed america when God's generals were there preaching, what was he doing? To, they forgot about their children and the devil just targeted them. From 25 years, they were there in the crusade and the children were, they left the children and the wives at home because they felt those people did not need change. So the men of God were preaching and the devil said, I, I give up on these ones. But he started growing with them. Channel O came. MTV came. Right? All kinds of things came. They grew. They didn't train them. They grew. They shaped their ideology. They are the ones today who are the leaders. Prime ministers. Heads of banks. Heads of institutions. And so a system runs. I mean they play the world like a chess. But it's going to change. I know we don't look like it yet. I assure you. You quote me. I've been saying certain things that I'll keep saying. We will all be great. And the best part is that we will know ourselves. That's what will happen. Don't trivialize the power of the Holy Spirit. Just give him time. He will surprise you. 
Give him time. Write this word down. Let's begin our teaching. Strategic kingdom influence. Um, let's define influence very quickly. I have a lot to talk about and I want us to finish very fast. Amen and amen and amen. Influence. What is influence? The capacity to have an effect. Influence is the capacity to have an effect on the character, development, and behavior of something or someone. Please make sure you are writing. The capacity to have an effect on the character, development, and behavior of something or someone is called influence. When you sustain an ability to create an effect in somebody's behavior, somebody's character, and his development, we call that influence. Number two, influence is the ability and the platform to change mindsets, comma, influence is the ability and the platform to change mindsets, comma, shape opinions and move others to act in a certain way change mindsets so the ability and the platform to be able to change mindsets shape opinions and move others to act in a certain way is called influence how we need this one of the keys to kingdom advance in the 21st century is not just evangelism is called influence and i add kingdom influence we have a mandate as a church listen listen we are not just here roaming around wondering what to do with our lives there is a mandate upon us that mandate is found in genesis 1 26 help us media genesis 1 26 matthew 6 verse 10 and mark 16 15 and 16. genesis 1 26 Matthew 6 verse 10, Mark 16, 15 and 16. It reveals our mandate as the church. Every one of you under the sound of my voice is part of those to make this mandate come to pass. And God said, Genesis 1 26, let us make man after our image, our likeness and let them have sovereign control dominion sovereign control the power of legislature the ability to extend an influence over the fish of the sea the fowl of the air the cattle and over all the earth over every creeping thing and everything that creeps upon the earth we are god's managers the state of the earth today is a revelation of our failure our inability to manage this domain of God's kingdom. We have a mandate as a church. Matthew 6 verse 10. Everyone read. Jesus was teaching this in what we have believed to be the Lord's prayer. One to read. Thy kingdom come. How? By your will being done in earth exactly as it is in heaven listen heaven is the way it is for two reasons one the presence of god two a culture a culture a culture there is a culture that makes heaven heaven and god is saying when you when we pray this is god's desire that his kingdom his sovereign rule will find expression in this our sphere in the exact way in other words reproduce the culture of heaven in your environment it's a mandate and then he further expands on how to do it mark chapter 16 mark 16 15 to 16 are you there media please help us you're giving us mark 10 you have to correct it Mark 16, 
15 okay and he said unto them read on please want to read go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature hold on the first assignment is go that means he expects a body that is moving action go then he tells you the strategy he says he didn't say go around the street he says go ye into enter a system called cosmos don't just go around thank god for sharing tracks and all of that but he gives you an idea his system of invasion i want you to enter a strata of human activities and when you are establishing that strata he said preach the gospel not to every human being not to every human being to every creature creature everything alive should feel the impact of the gospel communicate that influence and that ideology write this down our mandate as a church not koinonia i mean the global church the ecclesia our mandate as the church is to establish the lordship of christ i will keep drumming this till we get it again and again establish the lordship of christ in the hearts of men that's the first dimension to establish the lordship of christ in the hearts of men and the instrument we use to produce this is called the gospel the gospel the gospel is not just a message the gospel is an instrument the end of it is to establish the lordship of christ in the hearts of men number two to extend this is my concern tonight to extend the culture and authority of heaven across every territory and strata of human activity i'll take it again to extend the culture and authority of heaven to extend the culture and the authority of heaven across every territory and strata or sphere of human activity listen if all we do is establish the lordship of christ in the hearts of men that's important but we must go the extra mile to make sure that every strata of human activity also come under the influence of the christ look up please let me tell you where our lukewarm attitude came from our lukewarm attitude came from preachers who in an attempt to make us have the perspective of eternity in view have trivialized the necessity of the church today are we together now so in a bid to teach us and prepare us for rapture teach us about the second coming of christ etc etc right we we push it to the limit and then we give people an idea like every other thing is a waste every other thing don't don't worry about building no house don't build any business don't do anything is unnecessary just make sure you love god and remain rapturable and we say that to justify and then we find out that after 20 years jesus has not come but your child has come but your bills have come these are the ones that are coming jesus that you are preparing for is coming that's true but he has not come but your bills have arrived right the need for um your responsibility has arrived we have to be careful the way we teach people things many of us are well-meaning people but we are victims of an ideology that must be balanced i'm always obsessed with balance of course we have the other side of the equation people who are so careless about the things of god they are just carnal all they want is cars houses oh this and that and that they are, they are so carnal those kinds of people will go to hell when jesus comes because they are obviously not living with eternity in view but there is a balance everyone say there is a balance There is a balance so we have an assignment to extend the culture when promise was you know talking to us i'm sure some of you were shocked looking at him 
you cannot imagine that a gentleman like this was keeping dreadlocks and wearing earrings all around when he came to Zaria. You think he just wanted to wear it? He was reacting to something within him. Somebody told him that appearance or that state was equal to manhood and masculinity. And so he was a victim of his mindset. What happened to him? Not just deliverance, but what happened to him was a translation another idea an alternative structure came upon his life see you don't change people by just flogging them insulting them castigating them or telling them do this when you tell somebody do this the person will not do it he's reacting to something within him if you don't change that's why they bring people out of prison and they say make sure you don't steal again and you see the person standing they say sign here and he's signing one month later they say ah he said, honestly, this time around, this and that and that. Because they, they don't create programs that influence the minds of the people. You cast away that spirit and change their paradigm and then you win them. Amen? Let me discuss our mandate and the 21st century. I really want this to be relevant to us. The mandate of the church, I think one of the confusion in the church right now is how to be able to weave kingdom living and the reality of our changing society whether you believe it or not times are changing say times are changing the only constant thing in life is change the 21st century has brought in a lot of changes a lot of changes changes in the way even some of us who are young met certain things that we can even relate to and say ah things have changed we are not so old like that, but at least we can look back and be able to say, yesterday there was X, Y, Z. Today is now obsolete. Not to talk of our parents and our fathers and mothers here. They can tell you a lot of things we have no idea. Some of our little ones here don't know what a typewriter looks like. Some of them, when they grow, I'm sure they'll not even know what a stove looks like. I'm sure by the time they are adults, we'll be using e-cookers. Oh, don't limit the mind of man. Believe me. Who knew that somebody will create something as, as much as, I mean, hundreds of tons and then lift it up in the air, just like that. Even you, you can't hang in the air, yet plane that is heavier than you can rise up in the air. So don't, don't trivialize the power of the mind. cultures have changed the interests of people have changed perspectives have changed technology has changed a lot of things technology has changed our appetites the world right now is only hours away from anywhere anywhere hours away i'm sure that in the in the next future or in, in the next uh, maybe five ten years I'm sure you may not have to dial numbers to call them again. They will program them to work with your mind. I just think of Nas and his phone beeps. It can happen. I mean, there's artificial intelligence in phones. Phones can feel, phones can record, they can have memories. So the 21st century is here. And what is the attitude as far as our mandate is concerned? Because the old ways of doing things, even as far as kingdom advancement, will no longer be effective. I think it was school of ministry again, I was telling them. Did you know that right now, you can stand near an influential man's daughter, attempting to preach to her. They can just snap you, and in five minutes, the police are coming to catch you, and they'll say you are harassing her. Are we together now? You are harassing her. So the world, the world is, is gradually strangling the opportunities, the access points we have to reach people. And we must be able to reinvent ourselves by the Spirit of God. To adjust to the change and yet be effective in communicating our mandate. Is God blessing us? One of the tragic things about the metamorphosis of the church with respect to the current change 
is that most of the change that is being effected in the church is not effected with the authority and the supervision of the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you what happens when you try to adjust to the 21st century outside of the Holy Spirit. You will become something else. Completely something else. There are pastors under pressure to turn their churches to align to the 21st century. Please listen to me. There are businessmen, there are, there are entrepreneurs, there are all kinds of people, families, the, the paradigm of fatherhood, parenting, leadership is being compelled to change, to adjust to 21st century living. But you see, a believer is not just one who is born again. A believer is one who has submitted to the governing authority of the kingdom. And that your change must be with the Holy Spirit's supervision. So that he can tell you which attributes are timeless that will not change. And which ones are flexible enough. Not everything in the Christian life is permitted to change. There are timeless things. There are components of the believer's life that must remain constant. And I'll tell you where we get this teaching from. 1 Corinthians 9.22, please. I need to balance this teaching. Is God blessing us already? 1 Corinthians 9.22. This is the Bible stand that many contemporary preachers sadly have picked in. And we have brought it to seemingly be a strategy. Now I believe in metamorphosis. I'm teaching you change now. But that that change must be guided by the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. Everyone read. This is Paul writing to the Corinthian church. One to read. To the weak became as I as weak, that I may gain the weak. Are we together? Read on. I am made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. Now, Paul is saying something interesting here. Let me translate this for you. Paul is saying, I can become anything to anybody. This is a nice verse for Satan to take advantage of. Meaning, become a smoker to smokers. Are we together? Become a prostitute to prostitutes to win them. That's not what the Bible is saying. But that's what has happened in many churches. In our obsession to metamorphose and become relevant in the 21st century, we have been misguided by this scripture. And many things that happen, there are churches where members vote the sermon for the week that the pastor preaches are we together there are churches where all kinds of things happen now i don't insult these people at least they are serving god but that's that's dangerous we are removing certain ancient landmarks so as i attempt to teach us on that's why i call this strategic kingdom influence not just kingdom influence it must be strategic meaning the holy spirit is involved hallelujah the idea listen the idea of Paul here is that I am able to make adjustment. The idea here is not an idea about leaving your convictions. It's an idea of making adjustments. The summary of this entire communication is that Paul is saying, because of the reality of my society, I am able to make adjustments. Listen, any church, any pastor, that cannot adjust should be ready for empty pews i repeat any pastor any businessman any ceo any worker that cannot adjust notice i didn't say leave your convictions adjust means to create allowance for the excesses of people adjust means to create allowance for the limitations of people adjust means to create allowance for the perspectives of people when you become rigid and stringent forget about advancing the kingdom in today's world one of our fathers who has done that most remarkably that is a model for all of us is papa e. E. Adeboe. i've studied the redeemed christian church very carefully and what had been the secret of their exponential growth and influence i will tell you the key is this flexibility not compromise there is a difference between compromise and flexibility papa Iya deboe is a man of strong convictions he's very conservative in his approach to christianity alongside his wife but he realized that if i must achieve the mandate 
of seeing every redeemed church or at least in every two or three houses let there be one redeemed member i must be flexible enough and yet uncompromising the key is to maintain your convictions but give allowance for the conviction of others let them be able to find a place in your vision and so you see that it began to open up different models of redeemed branches and so you can see a redeemed branch that is generally conservative still adhering to the foundational tenants and you can see one that is quite modern in fact very modern you may not know that this is redeemed his job as a man of god is to ensure that the central leadership sustain the foundational um, model and the understanding of redeem this is a winning strategy so you can find redeem in france you can find redeemed in um in in certain places that you would not expect many pastors are unwilling to bend we are stringent on our ideologies and we do not want to create flexibility so the key is that we must be able to make adjustment everybody say adjustment adjustment is one key to strategic kingdom advancement you cannot say i cover my hair i don't i don't believe in wearing trousers for instance or living hair, and you say any other person i come across who i see with trousers or hair not covered is a devil i tear the person down you are going to be frustrated at the same time nobody should put pressure on you to influence your convictions unnecessarily you have a right to sustain your convictions but at the same time you must be able to give room are we together now I'm teaching us on our mandate and the 21st century. I've gone to minister in several places. And um, when you go to minister in places, you'll be amazed the approach of many people. I've gone to ministries that are very conservative. Very, very conservative. I've gone to other ministries that are generally charismatic and unorthodox. I've gone to ministries that are wild. I've gone to ministries that are lawless. That one is not charismatism, it's lawlessness. Yet, in the midst of it, I have been able to make adjustment without violating my convictions. Are we together? Koinonia runs on certain convictions. But part of the reason why God has blessed us is because we have been able to make adjustments. Are we together now? Adjustments that can allow people to, to come in and be able to not necessarily incorporate their ideologies but give them space to know God for themselves and in that knowing God many people begin to adjust not by force but on the strength of the information that is coming to them is God blessing us yeah. you cannot win people you resent you cannot stand and all of a sudden you see a lady with heavy makeup wearing a very tight trouser and all of that and you know you just give this atmosphere of look at this prostitute and this devil you want to kill me and your idea was to come and win her and then you come and stand and oh you are a sinner you see i will not listen to your message no no no, no. it has nothing to do with being angry i will not listen to your message you come to preach to me for 10 minutes you don't even know what my name is you are initiating me into a cult you are misrepresenting the love of christ at the same time i will not come and see you and you say ah uh, you really want to preach christ to me if prove that you love by coming to my house or coming to this i'm i'm in the club if you really want to win me come and meet me at the club i won't come go to hell are we together there is a balance so that we don't begin to do stupid things there are ladies that have entered relationship you ask them why they say i'm on a road ah, you are not sss that's 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 too costly you say i entered relationship it's not love or oh, i don't love him ask him i i am passionate about souls you are getting it wrong i'm trying to explain this scripture i become all things to all men does not mean i leave my convictions to turn into everything 
whether you are wearing jeans or suit you are a christian and being a christian is is exact there's no confusion about it christianity is not buddhism there are exact tenets there are exact foundational convictions write this down we must carefully study the word please let's write let's hurry up we must carefully study the word and adopt timeless scriptural strategies for effective kingdom advance we must carefully study the word and adopt timeless scriptural strategies for effective kingdom advance listen the key to kingdom advancement is found in the bible timeless secrets that can advance the kingdom through any culture any kind of civilization and when we study the bible we will find therein secrets that can survive any kind of sociological metamorphosis it doesn't matter what dispensation the truths there remain timeless keys to kingdom influence let's discuss now keys to kingdom influence Ask and now give the nations to you, O oh Lord. That's the cry of my heart. Distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us. Sing it one more time. Ask and now give the nations to you. Oh Lord, that's the cry of my heart. Distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us. Keys to kingdom influence. Listen, I've told us that the key to strategic kingdom advancement is called influence the new kind of evangelism that will break through any protocol and any hardness is called influence evangelism the advocacy that comes when a man can gain a platform and is able to influence the convictions of people never trivialize influence and its effect to a person a territory a people and a civilization at every point in your life you are being influenced by somebody and you are influencing somebody keys are very important in the kingdom you hear jesus speak again about keys and i will give you the keys of the kingdom the keys of the kingdom are the mysteries, the laws, and the principles that give us access. The keys of the kingdom are the mysteries, the laws, the principles that give us access. There are keys to kingdom influence. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm praying that as I begin to teach this, as you embrace it, you will step into a level of influence that will surprise you. The Lord spoke to us and said, this is our year of multiplied grace and influence. He expects us to do more. And he's guiding us on how to get there. Number one, the first key to strategic kingdom influence is to have a pace-setting, trailblazing, global mentality. Write it the way I said it. Don't write your idea. Pay setting, comma. 
I took time to write it this way. It's supposed to create an effect. Don't scatter it. Pay setting, comma, trailblazing, comma, global mentality. Write it and look at me. Let's cane out certain mediocrities in our mind. We're on our way to better days. We're on our way to better days. Mm. We're on our way to better days. Hold on. Pace setting. Trailblazing. Global mentality. See, we, many of us are still growing and we're still coming into the comprehension of how low and depraved our thinking and our ideology is. As marketed to us by our institutions, as marketed to us by our upbringing, as marketed to us by our Christian advocates, our pastors. We are largely victims of the thinking of a man who have sat under for many years. Our approach, the approach of the average Christian is not global. The approach of the average Christian is not pace setting. We are comfortable with mediocrity, yet we want to command influence. A music artist, no global mentality, no pace setting mentality. So we are comfortable borrowing anything from anywhere not yielding to the spirit of creativity that will launch us into unimaginable feats there are many of us seated here who can do so much for god but our mindsets are small i have challenged the leaders again and again koinonia is an apostolic ministry this is only an, a local platform for us to meet together but the approach is global the approach is, is way beyond Nigeria and Africa. You see, we must be able to excel. Let's look at a few scriptures. Matthew 5, 14. Then Deuteronomy 6, 2 to 3. Media, you have to help us. We really have to be fast. Jesus said this, Matthew 5, 14. Write it down and please look up. One, two, read. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. The second statement explains the first line. It says you are the light of the world. Then it compares you. It says you are a city. In other words, can a city that is set on a hill be hidden? Global approach to life. We start up businesses with no idea of global approach. The average business in Nigeria, if it lasts 10 years, is a miracle. 15 years is a wonder. We don't think far. Right? The average church, do you know how many churches start in January? And by December, they are dead. Because the way the pastor started and was running, you would think rapture will happen tomorrow. And he runs no, no sense of leadership, no pace setter, trailblazer mentality we come into a system and do the exact same thing listen listen there is a difference between a manager and a leader a manager maintains status quo a leader breaks new frontiers a true apostolic spirit is a groundbreaking spirit you cannot be under a ministry like this and then your thinking is still old Daniel 6, verse 2 to 3. Pace setting mentality. Hallelujah. This was the story of Daniel. Look up, please. Let's see the kind of mindset Daniel had. It's not just that he was called Daniel. He reigned over certain provinces. The Bible says, and over these three presidents. Sorry, I'm cutting from verse 1 of whom daniel was what please read it of whom daniel was first means a pace setter first means a leader surpassing ordinary standards he said that the princes might give accounts to them and the kings should have no damage verse 3 
Then this Daniel was what? Everybody say pace setters. This Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes. Why? Because an excellent spirit. Was it because he was a Christian? Because he possessed certain things that made him irresistible. And the king thought to set him over what? Influence as a result of a pace setting mentality. How many Christians start their work and never dream of becoming the managers or the people at the highest echelons? They don't care. In fact, they run away. When they tell them they are considering you for promotion, they say, ah, but for what now? How about God? Is it that you don't know what? It's a demonic mentality. Whoever taught you that, is, it, it may be a sincere person, but that's a doctrine of demons that keeps the church bad. I love Jesus. When Jesus showed up, he broke status quo. Genesis 41. Give us 33. Then we move to 38 to 44. Please, very fast. Sorry, we have to read these things because I want to press something in tonight. Genesis 41. Give us verse 33. Then we move to 38 down to 44. Now look up, please, everyone. This was the story of Joseph. Now, therefore, this is Joseph advising pharaoh now therefore look out for a man discreet and wise whoever qualifies whoever has that mentality give him this kind of influence set him over the land of egypt there is influence for the taking but there is a requirement who is that one man in egypt who has sustained a paradigm of thinking that can produce this result give us verse 38 hear what the king says in response and Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find... Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. May that be your testimony. Amen. That even your enemies will sit together and say, Let's tell ourselves the truth. Can we find a trailblazer? That when the government wants to sow a seed as a government to a church, they turn and say, Which, which church is making impact that is consistent with the values of the government? Can we find such a one as this is? A man of whom the spirit of God is. We are reading down to 44. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, Listen, for as much as God has showed thee this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Watch how cheap influence becomes. Thou shalt do what? I give you influence instantly. Thou shalt be over my house. I hope you know Pharaoh knew that Joseph was not an Egyptian. There are certain levels of mentality you have that will veto your background. All this issue of we don't accept people from this state. They've not found an exceptional person. That's why. That's when you see them breaking the rule. They will say this is the first time we're doing it. Say that's that I'm a, I'm a first timer. I have, I have the spirit of breaking new grounds. Thou shalt be over my house, and according to my word shall all thy word shall all the people be ruled. Can you imagine? That's a costly, that's a risk from Pharaoh. It says, Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over how many? All the land of Egypt. Do you think that's good for the kingdom? Do you think Joseph's father and brothers would have been allowed to come to Egypt if he didn't have influence? Are we together now? Can you see the advantages of his influence? His influence afforded him to say, where's my father? The same way when you have influence, you can look at somebody and say, you said you are looking for a job, please come. I know you. Your being in Koinonia has qualified you. Even if you don't know anything, I know you love God and you can listen. We have preached people. We have, we have destroyed opportunities for the church to rise. 
because of mentalities that we think are good the church is almost an endangered species compared to the world's global brand in terms of advancement we are there smiling throwing ourselves under the anointing and then the world is is gaining is squeezing the church into a mold and one policy can just write us away and pharaoh took off his ring a symbol of royalty from his hand and put it upon joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck 43 and he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had and they cried before him bow the knee and he made him ruler over all the land of egypt the last verse and pharaoh said to joseph i am pharaoh and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in the land shout influence say it again in our families there's nobody to speak for us when we are suffering we just call on god directly and god wants to answer but there is no envoy no human being that can partner with god to wipe our tears do you know it's a cause to have generations of people with no influential person in that family you hear people here say i'm the first person to go to school i'm the first person to get a job you know the danger every other person surrounds you like worms drawing from you you are any hundred thousand and there are 22 people waiting and hoping to receive their share of cake from you influence mm. leadership is the passion to excel when i talk of leadership i don't just mean ruling leadership in terms of excelling the passion to excel at an uncommon level i'm explaining to you what pace setting trailblazing global mentality is in one word is leadership the passion to excel at an uncommon level so as to gain access over that sphere listen the reason why you excel is so that you can rise to the highest level and then be able to gain access we need men and women who have access and i tell you koinonia hear me this is what you are becoming are we together now oh this is what you are becoming just give us time in the next few years in the next few years you know the way if somebody is walking and he says my name is Nas Dangote. Even if he's not related to Dangote, that name has already brought favor to his life. I trust God that Koinonia in the future will be, it, it will be like a, a signet ring of favor. I will never pastor and lead people who are failures. We just comfort ourselves. And No, no, no. A passion to excel you are in agriculture you are thinking how do I lead not Kai how do I get my small one mudu of beans me and my wife she's not even complaining you are not pace setting you are not trailblazing remember that if all you want to do is succeed you are carnal but if you want to succeed to gain influence and allow God come into that space you are an ambassador always attach a kingdom motivation to your pursuit and then there is no level of pursuit that will embarrass you i will never be small i hate it and it is for the kingdom number two the second key to kingdom influence is character you want to command kingdom influence in our generation today you need character everybody say character what is character christ likeness moral uprightness second peter chapter one from verse five to nine talks to us about sustaining kingdom character just write it down we may not have time to look at it listen brothers and sisters please look at me 
if you want to be global those outside please pay attention if you want to go far in business in ministry in your career you have to curb a lot of excesses in your life the bible says listen to me the bible says um all things are lawful but not all things are expedient all things are permissible but not all things are necessary on your journey to influence there are weights some things are not necessarily sinful they are just weights weights character moral uprightness from the way you speak the way you dress the way you behave you want to be a leader you are in a place they are sharing food ah, i have not got to you are just stretching you are not a leader god cannot promote you to disgrace him like that there is a decorum there is a protocol for great people i'm not just talking about pretending and, and living a fake and a false life but you must be disciplined you are dressing you iron your clothes you talk well you see people you greet them you don't see somebody like our daddy here and say ah daddy how are you prof you know as if you are talking to to yourself no. character there are many people who do not have character moral uprightness you see an elderly woman moving your mother something you cannot help her pick up the load no character there's this wild nature that our generation of young people have that we must tame and cut away we we associate youthfulness to wildness that means if you are temperate people think you are too cold be wild you won't be a leader that way look at how teachers the teachers in our school who teach our students you see how they dress you see how they talk now i'm not against anything but a young man comes rings in his five hands i'm not against all of those things but you are not it's not seen but it's a weight the students are watching you the next day they come with it too you sag your jeans a teacher you see jeans with um um uh, what they call it all kinds of there's this patch jeans that you see that exposes everywhere i mean there's nothing for the imagination believe me if nobody has told you anything is wrong with it joshua selman is saying it write it mark me something is wrong with that kind of thing you won't go far with it i'll preach oh <laughs> hallelujah see there is a protocol to greatness you must give up something to go up you cannot Go up with everything you wear with down. It's, it, you are down because a weight held you. If you are ready to move up, be ready to drop some things. Vulgar communications. Don't speak intelligently. Many of us today cannot construct a good letter, a proposal, because our vulgar speaking and communication has destroyed us. You are writing something to apply for a job. You are writing you as you four as letter four you see that i need a job from you thanks and the manager looks at it and says look at look at all this nuisance to our company we have labored to build ourselves and these people are coming to destroy us see our generation interprets modesty as weakness when your life is temperate you feel guilty for it because we live in a generation where you must be loud and wild to be thought of those people will not last long history is full of many of them prison cells are full of many of them they created their own rules to life everybody say i'll be a man of character say it i'll be a man of character or a woman of character yes every bad wife was a bad human being <laughs> every irresponsible father was an irresponsible human being every bad leader was a bad human being 
you bring in your personality you bring in your mindset it doesn't just change when you become ceo it's an attitude hallelujah moral uprightness you are calm not the person moving around gossiping about everybody saying everything about everybody no only cheap people do that only idle people do that hallelujah there are rules for greatness you ignore them you will never be great the level that god has brought us in ministry by the grace of god you see all these people inside and outside i honor god and i bless them but never make a mistake they didn't just come just because of the anointing there are factors combined together this is what i'm teaching you see let me tell you people never become loyal to you until they probe your life and they are satisfied that you are worth being loyal to loyalty is not a gift you earn it are we together there are so many people who see especially some of us young people and they think the loyalty is just because of solidarity no loyalty is a product of a track record people probe your life and come to a point where they are satisfied with your convictions and they they are they are they are comfortable that you are a leader worth submitting to you don't command influence just because you think you are spiritual character there are many pastors who don't have character you just get up and go and disturb somebody's house early in the morning peace be unto this house and pastor so 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 bam 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 madam is there tea you think it's a nice thing they are marking you you represent boredom to them no character are you anointed yes will you last like that no that's how we inconvenience a lot of people you now meet somebody and prophesy to the person and say transfer seven thousand or ten thousand to my account god keeps quiet and you think he was right he was very wrong it's just his mercy that overlooked it there are pastors who do that the moment they say i want to pray for you what they say is i want money from you moment they pray for you they just say transfer two thousand to my account so that he can activate the faith there is a place for seed faith but many of the things we do that's why a young man right now is associated with the moment parents see certain people even some of us young ministers you go to pray in somebody's house and they are already suspecting they are looking at you you have to talk for five minutes for them to eat to loosen up and say oh this guy this guy looks very cultured character you get to somebody's house in five minutes you have entered their kitchen they are prime plantain you carry one you eat you go out they are watching you there are some of us like this i must talk to you i want you to become something and we must cop these things don't do that say no 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 we are free they always allow me no see let me tell you part of character is the ability to say no to some things that are even good you must see there are certain things that is like Esau. You are trading your birthright for it. There are times people have carried fat seeds and, and checks, something to give me. And the Holy Spirit will say, no, 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 no. Because in their minds, they are feeling guilty. They are not just blessing me out of conviction. They just feel tall. This man of God has prayed. And you see them, I'm ready to go. And you see them pinching themselves, giving signs. And somebody will enter and they come out. And then I tell them, I say, no, 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 no. I receive it i bless it and i sow it back and it's ah man of god can we have your number please honestly you see that you have earned loyalty because you have let them know that you your convictions are greater than money for some of us Abba, you collect and count it and say Abba, madam you too Abba, what is all this how much is my transport from where i left i did night vigil deliver us the money you are dropping ten thousand you drop it on the table there and say madam add something are you fake no but you are a suspect it's easy for people to think you went to collect power some of us the way we dress uh, now please um don't 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 feel bad I'm, I'm just trying to work on you i've seen men of god and um, please i'm not uh i wish i don't have to preach this but i have to obey god 
from your hairstyle the way you look you look like a thief you look like i mean the way you are dressing and even when you are talking people are afraid they are not at ease honestly you may not be you may be the nicest person available but something about your lack of character and environment you tell a lady i want to see you she's shaking because she doesn't even know what can happen no come on i want you to be on a project that you must be trusted be on a project be trustworthy not perfection but you are sincere enough to be trustworthy when people commit their loyalty to you it's a trust you don't disappoint it how many pastors have dashed down the loyalty of people loyalty is a trust brothers and sisters so god is talking to some of us now who are careless with little little things you just sit down and send a text to four or five sisters you make jollof rice for me you my birthday is coming by june i want a suit sam you buy uh, this and that there are men of god that do that i'm sorry if if you are in that category forgive me but it's wrong i cannot imagine myself coming now to tell heads of department all of you bring hundred hundred thousand my birthday is coming in june choir you bring bring buy me shoe uh, all the pastors <laughs> pastor femi and alpha and you who have congregation so you people you ah, ah. god didn't send you to be a burden to the people sometimes we do these things sincerely but i'm telling you now there is need for adjustment don't do that see bless the people and let them bless you based on their perception of who they think you are they will surprise you they will surprise you there is nobody who will have a track record of transformation from your life who will not give back to you amen let's go to the next point some of you don't seem to like this point the third key to strategic kingdom influence is excellence excellence what is excellence the quality of doing things well the quality of doing things well write this down the difference most times is not what you do but how you do it the difference brothers and sisters that makes you a great man of influence most times is not what you do is how you do it while i was babbing this this evening i was talking to my baba and i was just telling him that do you know that there are babbing saloons in abuja that you will pay thousands of naira and the people are not as good as him but you will pay because of how they do it the clipper for babbing is different for carving is different there is really nothing there it's just packaging but because of that packaging you will pay for it he was telling me that the, i think it was oga jordan he should be here he went to abuja also and then he went to bab somewhere with his brother and they paid three thousand they gave them wine and chinchin is that what you cannot buy how much is chinchin ten naira how much is this coke this 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 uh, heaven pure heaven wine 250 add it together you paid three thousand and then you watch match But listen, it's excellent. So you'll be rewarded. When you are excellent, you name your price. You see that? What you are doing now, are you excellent in it? Please let me talk to us. I salute, I know many people in Koinonia are engaged actively in all kinds of things. But I want to challenge you, are you excellent? Oh, you make kunu. You think he's small, but are you excellent? Why don't you think of a way of doing it very well? Don't say kunu is not nice. If you make it well, I will buy it. I think someone in the protocol, he has um, some popcorn machines on campus. 
and then i told him i said i want to taste your popcorn let me see what and what do you put there and he was telling me what he said all that one is stories bring it let me taste let me know whether you are excellent see let me tell you something the minimum standard in our world today is excellence even if you don't have the finance to grow into it have the mindset first so you have only one cloth and that one cloth will make it look as if you are not excellent you are because already you you've had an ideology of excellence you iron it you look smart it's not doing ministry that makes you excel is how you do it it's not preaching that makes you excel is how you preach it's not doing business that makes customers come to you is how you do it it's not doing your job that makes you excel but how you do it exceptional people most times are not necessarily super skilled people they are just people who have been able to force their value to be recognized excellence say i'll be excellent say it again i'll be excellent number four give me a few minutes here and we'll pray open your spirit and your ears right now to what you're about to hear the fourth key in our day in the 21st century to strategic kingdom advancement is called results we're on our way to better days we're on our way to better days we're on our way to better days on common results is one of the greatest key greatest keys to strategic kingdom influence john 15 verse 8 listen i will share with you certain things about results today that will make you go back to your life and you will insist that i must produce results john 15 verse 8 15 not 5 15 verse 8 okay herein is my father glorified read on that ye bear fruit much fruit exceptional fruit notable results it says so by so doing you will prove that you have been following me diligently listen brothers and sisters our world today thrives on results pace setters influencers are those who command results remember my teaching commanding results i want you to pay attention right now write this down on common supernatural result is the end of all argument on common supernatural result is the end of all argument creation is not waiting for the explanation of the sons of god waiting for their manifestation i tell you i feel the anointing of the spirit as i'm talking about this something will happen something must happen to you tonight uncommon result is the end of all arguments write this down results demonstrate dominion and control over obstacles limitations and circumstances results demonstrate dominion and control over obstacles limitations and circumstances oh hallelujah i'm a believer in the word of god results listen look at me when you produce results in your life it shows certain things that you have authority you have got the keys that commands authority i told you that the fear of man is the inability to control situations and circumstances there are a number of people that were brought here that are sick this night that's 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 a situation 
that's a circumstance you hear them say circumstances beyond our control and whoever can bring it under control must command influence Mark Zuckerberg wields tremendous influence because he was able to bring a particular dimension of science under control on common supernatural results are a sign that you truly have authority over circumstances part of the reasons why there are so many people inside and outside is because by the grace of god and with all humility to an extent god has been able to grace us to show that we have sustained certain keys to command consistent control and dominion over certain aspects of life i was in kaduna when we ministered and we were in the restaurant together um, with my people we were just trying to eat have a meal before we rush and come back to zaria and while we we're there just trying to order a meal a woman looks at me and um ah the woman was looking at me and now i, I started feeling embarrassed i said madam do i know she said you are pastor joshua i said yes she said ah well done sir and i looked i said ah, madam how are we you know i was playing with her little boy and i said where do i know you and the woman just nodded she said she was going to tell me a little story and she said i came for counseling two years ago looking as wretched as anything a single mom with a child no hope for marriage finances crashing everything being destroyed and you prayed for me and you prophesied you told me that they were going to call me back to the job and they would send me to the marketing department and i should go there say man of god that's exactly what happened they sent me to the marketing department and i was i was sad and she did her hand like this i saw a ring she said two months ago i got married even with the child she pointed outside and i saw a clean black e-class she said will you believe that i will be the owner of this brothers and sisters say results one result will end every kind of argument every kind is god speaking to us results pastors produce results produce results you know why our prayer department by the grace of god is like it's like second koinonia it's like midweek service of koinonia for many people because of results they are praying and they are seeing results nobody will come and spend two three hours here just like that people are not idiots results by the time your life listen i don't care how much you pray or fast if there is no result you'll be frustrated the end of your work with god is that god ah, you come to a point where you become so full of the anointing of the spirit you can produce some common results fill me up until i overflow i wanna run over i wanna run over fill me up until i overflow i wanna run over i wanna run over sing one time fill me up till i overflow i wanna have a passion i like you to look at every area of your life and be tired of being barren of results you are a pastor no results no healings no miracles no salvation no transformation and you explain it well and say it's because i'm telling the truth people are not coming all those things are flimsy excuses results when a family that is barren comes 
and there is a miracle that's result there are some results you cannot argue with no no you're a businessman don't worry that people don't believe in you my brother produce results and you will close the mouth of any and everybody even if all you are doing is packing suck away just produce results let me tell you something it's frustrating to make noise about things you don't have results to show because your results are supposed to be your noise in the school of greatness not your words i can do this i am this and that no i can pray where is the fruit of the prayer i can fast where is the fruit of the fasting i am warded where is it results you want to command influence in our world today you need results you need results this is the apex of this teaching tonight you need results supernatural results write the following things about results results are a product of correct understanding and application of laws and principles results are a product of correct understanding and application of laws and principles let me show you a scripture that would probably really really surprise you give us matthew 14 please let's look at it matthew 14 Matthew 14 we read from verse 23 and um, we read down to the end let's hurry up and when he had sent the multitudes away everybody watch this he went up into a mountain apart to pray and when the evening was come he was there alone rush media just continue but the ship was now in the midst of the sea tossed with waves for the wind was contrary there was a situation those in the ship could not control next verse and in the fourth watch of the night jesus went on to them doing what brothers and sisters the same water the same water was responding differently to jesus the same water you know why because jesus was operating on certain principles are we together now next verse and when the disciples saw him walking on the sea they were troubled saying it is a spirit notable results and they cried out for fear there is a kind of result that will not only make people celebrate you they will be afraid that one will move beyond the realm i watch some of you as you are sitting down and the power of god begins to break out i see everybody looking around and you are just trying to adjust trying to show like i'm, I'm okay i'm not afraid there are certain results that can happen in your life it will make the heart of men fear but straightway jesus spake to them saying be of good cheer it is i he said be not afraid verse 28 and peter said unto him lord if it be thou bid me come unto thee on the water 29 mm. and he said come and when peter was come down out of the water he walked on the water to go to jesus 30 this is my verse of emphasis but when he saw the wind boy's terrors he was afraid and began to sink and he cried saying lord save me look at this two people are standing on water one is sinking the other one is standing was it the water never the water same nigeria same economy same dollar rise same everything are we together now same harshness in ministry same being in the north where they say people are persecuted but then you sustain a mystery jesus was standing and when peter cried he lifted peter and peter stood just like him meaning you can bring people to your experience listen there was something jesus knew that made that water treat him that way there is something you do not know that is making your life turn around 
someone is walking through it like this life is responding to people in different ways on the strength of the laws they have kept please hear me correct understanding and application of laws and principles number two results are a product of mastery 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 exceptional competence you have mastered the laws that produce them so thorough that you do it unconsciously that's the kind of attitude that produces results number three results are a product of diligence there are many times you keep knocking on the door of destiny until it opens sometimes you may knock for many years but you continue diligence and persistence is what separates men from boys diligence number four and i want you to leave this take home this one tonight results are a product of the presence of the anointing ah the anointing does not make the difference the anointing is the difference when results become supernatural and consistent then there's no limit to the influence of the person producing it when results become notable and consistent listen listen if you produce results for a short time it will not create the effect it needs to be consistent that's why you find out that god can be using a particular man of god or a church he can continue for many years and then one is like he hits a breaking point in the spirit in one year he will step into a dimension of increase consistency consistency I was watching a video of Steve's Joe, late Steve's Joe, Apple founder, 1991, 1991, he was talking to their team of executives. And if you hear that guy's idea, as at 91, everything he was saying they would do, they did. Men who produce results. Brothers and sisters, if you're part of this ministry, you must produce results not just receive results produce results in every area hallelujah when our sister came up and said she got five points i laughed but i was impressed with her but i'm not impressed enough until we find 20 people in a row that's notable enough that's the type we can clap with and smile set your standard so high even when they are clapping for you you are still pressing to move higher if you set your standard too low you will hit it easily that's what mediocrity is setting low standards i like her she said four point something when she hit it she set another one you must set a very high standard there is such a high standard that i put in ministry that's why i don't compete because the standard alone, I keep competing against that standard, is enough to engage me. Hallelujah. I want to get to a point where I will be so full of the Holy Ghost. So full of the anointing of His Spirit, I'm telling you. You don't have to start praying for people. It doesn't matter what you are talking about. They will pay to get your presence in a place. Even if it's just to sit down, they know they will never be the same. Fill me up till I overflow. I wanna run over. I wanna run over. Please fill me up till I overflow. I wanna run over. Listen, let me challenge you, everybody here. Create a system that measures your growth. Don't mark your script by yourself and score yourself A and organize speech and price for yourself. You're a mediocre when you do that. Challenge your standard. Don't do small things and rejoice over it. 
let me tell you something the key to mediocrity is finding one person you are better than and settling down because of that as a pastor i'm better than this guy as a great i'm better than this guy those kind of people will never be my friends those who come around and start telling you who they are better than no because they are the type who will fight anybody that rises I, i'm not a product of all those kinds of things there is enough the assignment the demand of the assignment is enough you compete against the standard god has given you there is a benchmark those who are men of god today were ushers in the bible welfare personnel look at the condition to be in welfare full of the holy ghost welfare to serve food you needed to serve food with the anointing so we are constantly moving thank god for what god is doing through the school of ministry but we are rising thank god for what god is doing through our messages and the media ministry but we are rising the result is too small the result is not yet notable enough i tell you compared to where we are going this is child's play we've not started anything the level of the excellence is still at its foundation foundation we have not even done anything that's how you challenge yourself don't sit down with your small business and come back with five thousand and you are laughing and say kai is better than nothing be happy for where you are but never want to remain here oh what do you do i'm into interior decor are you see let me tell you something anything you are not competent in just keep quiet about it talking about it will be disgracing yourself there are so many people around ask them what do you do they say i'm into interior decor really like who like what how much can i pay you is there something you can do to me that will make me need you even if i don't like you you have a restaurant can we eat in your restaurant if we have a guest coming can we take the guest to your restaurant and be comfortable I have a church. Can I come to your church and sit down and be sure that God will bless me? Oh, I'm a driver. Like who? Where do you know? Challenge yourself. Don't mark yourself and say I'm good. There are many talented people inside and outside. Somebody wrote one song and came and sang it for me. I said, my brother, please go and work on it. God is helping you. Don't produce anything from this. Go and work on it. It's obvious you I can show you at least five rules of music you broke on this I told them who is your role model who is your inspiration they say he mentioned expensive names as if it's just to talk I said how many of their videos do you have not their videos of the album they produce have you watched their stage rehearsals have you gone out of your way to find out how they rehearse listen you don't learn from a man by watching his real life performance you watch from a man by learning how he builds you don't learn from usain bolt by seeing how he runs no you see how he rehearses you don't learn from a man of god by just seeing how he displays the anointing you learn the mystery of his secret place koinoni i'm challenging you god is taking us far there are many of us here who would have entered certain levels of influence opportunities came and passed us by is still passing us by because we have not mastered that key that will give us influence there are so many people in this place you are in business you are the only one who knows you're in business because your products you don't know nothing about business you will not sit down and learn you will not grow everybody will be what are you doing i'm into real estate what are you doing i'm a ceo ceo of nothing there's no result sit down and learn many young people moving around with suit and bible and, and ipad what are you i'm a pastor my name is pastor pastor david revelation or david king or something that's not what will give you open the doors of ministry let me tell you something god knows as a person i am more than willing to invest into the life of anybody that is serious and ready to rise up believe me anything you are doing if it's not of standard you see, and you don't get standard by default you learn 
learn from the best don't learn from your colleagues your colleagues are your colleagues because something made you the same way you rise up you learn something you do not know is the reason why your life is limited something you know but have refused to believe is making you stay God has given me access, uncommon access to people. And sometimes I look at where I am and it's like a dream. I'm saying, Joshua Selman, what are you looking for in this place? Influence. Influence. Whenever you see a man of influence, don't be angry. It's not mistake. Results, brothers and sisters. I'm the firstborn in my family, but the way they are even treating me, I can't even talk. Result, result, result. Everybody say result produce result and you will switch the button i'm 20 years i'm 30 years they are still treating me like a child result prove them wrong produce results don't make noise i'm obsessed about studying successful people i'm not ashamed i i have an appetite to confront my ignorance i confront it with joy and gladness I confront my ignorance with, with no sense of embarrassment at all. I like knowing what I don't know anything about. When I discover things in my life, I say, ah, this is what I didn't know. I go for that knowledge. I want you to produce results. The little level God has brought this ministry is as a result of the results. The level of organization at the little level we are in there is a formula to it it's not just happening by mistake that you come and as many as we are there is still some level of organization you don't guess you learn what you see today is what we knew yesterday tomorrow will reveal what we have known today please i'm challenging you. we are going to pray if you want to command influence influence has monetary value people will pay you and bless you in a way that will bring tears out of your eyes and you will say lord what what is this what are you doing to me for if the cloud be full of rain the bible says they empty themselves upon the earth men of god god is challenging us tonight stop being a mediocre surround yourself with three or four friends and say among all of them i'm the one who prays most that's nonsense mediocrity i'm the one who has revelation more mediocrity my dear may the lord anoint you it's an anointing that is coming upon you may the lord anoint you you are weak in the spirit i strengthen you right now by the power of the holy spirit You gave me a brand new song to sing to you. That's why I will lift up my voice and sing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Lord, you took my pain away. And then you gave me joy You're my peace, my melody In the center of the storm You gave me a brand new song To sing to you That's why I will lift up my voice And say yeah, 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 yeah The Lord is giving you beauty for ashes Beauty for ashes, beauty for ashes, and a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Beauty for ashes. There is a woman that came here with a sick child. There is a woman that came here with a sick child.
What's wrong with him? I got a problem with the mic. No mic. What's wrong with him? Huh? SS. SS. This is not the situation. I'll pray for him, but in fact, this this is a baby. It's not even somebody as old as this. This is somebody within the age range of maybe a small child that is sick. Go dear, go dear, go dear. Come, your breakthrough has come. Yeah, yeah. Where are you coming from? Samaru, you believe Jesus will touch you right now? You believe that? Do you love Jesus? I love Jesus. And other things. You know what I'm talking about, right? Listen, you have to give God everything. I'm not talking of born again. Everything. Total surrender. Are you getting what I'm saying? There's no one leg in, one leg out. It has to be completely all for Him. Hold my hands and let me pray for you. You all go there. I'll pray for you. Will you let her go now in the name of Jesus? I see you in the spirit. You will let her go now. I'm speaking to this other lady. Don't worry, she may not be looking at me. I'm not talking to her. Release her family right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I cause darkness. I cause darkness over the family. I set you free right now in the name of Jesus Christ from every power that is not of God. Madam, I will, there will be a prayer session and I'll pray for your son. But let me just lay hands on him since you came out. Someone had a dream this morning. You saw me laying hands on you just this morning, early this morning. I know people have this kind of dream, but someone specifically had that dream this morning. Father, heal this boy in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, look at me. You love Jesus with all your heart. Very much. He will do mighty things through your life. Just be patient. Huh? Now is not the time of manifestation. Now is the time of building. But it is true that he will do mighty things through your life. Hold my hands. Father, do to her what she saw in the dream. In the name of Jesus. It will do something to your spirit. It's an awakening that is happening to you. chains of limitation over you now I cause those chains, I set them on fire in the name that is above all names may those chains be broken and I separate you from error there is a spirit of error that can come with zeal when it is misdirected, I separate you from error, you will be circumspect and you will only be accurate in the name of Jesus. Where is Isaac in ushering? Is he around? It's time for you to step into a new level. The Lord is removing something. I'm seeing like a surgery being done on you. There is something that so badly keeps you from rising to the next level. And the Lord says, it's time I prune it. It's a desire. It's an appetite that he's killing because it does not come from him. He wants to do mighty things. Hold my hands.
kill that appetite, oh God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let that leave. Everything that does not name the name of Christ, may it leave. Come. This gentleman, you, it's time to respond to the dream you had. Come. These are wicked forces of darkness. Tying your life and your destiny down with delay. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I set you free by the power of God. That demonic dream and the experience that, had, that you had there, let it never return again. In the name of Jesus Christ, whatever gives them legal access to your life is sealed and broken by the blood. In the name of Jesus Christ. The last person and then will just come, my dear, this lady. No, yes, come. You now, yes. Let no man despise you, for out of you will come a treasure. Let no one despise you. Let no one despise you for out of you will come a treasure the Lord says I should tell you there is this treasure that is hidden in earthen vessels that the excellency power may be of God and not of men come hold my hands there is a fragrance that is coming upon your life from today that will make you uncommon uncommon distinguished for you love the Lord with your whole heart You love the Lord with your whole heart. Father, in the name of Jesus, everything that makes men despise, I curse it. I curse it. Hallelujah. Wow. Acts chapter 3. Turn to your neighbor and say, Are you still here? I just want to charge us a bit. Welcome everybody, all those who came from far and near. Honor you. Glad to have you here. You will never be the same. Now, Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from birth, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful. To ask arms of them that entered into the temple. Who seen Peter and John. Follow me closely. About to go into the temple. Asked an arm. And Peter fastened, fastening his eyes upon him. With John said. Look on us. And this is the key verse. Verse 5. Let's read together. One to read. And he gave heed unto them expecting to receive something expecting to receive something when he said look on us they paid attention because they were expecting that they were going to receive something as I began to pray and say Lord what would I share with your people the Lord said the only thing I need from them is expectation 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 is a proof of faith Expectation is a proof that you trust God. Hallelujah. If you, if you tell me you are hungry and I dip my hands in my pocket, automatically you begin to have a sign of expectation because you anticipate that I'm bringing out something. Is that true? And so you begin to position yourself to receive and say thank you. The only thing God is asking from you tonight is that you be expectant expect that sickness to leave your body expect that family captivity to come to an end expect the lord to visit you expect to step into new levels of the anointing expect that no matter what the challenge is the power of god can step into your life it does not take time it only takes the spirit of god 
For where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Where the spirit of the Lord is not, there is no liberty. I want you to know that the spirit of God is in this place tonight. And the only message the Lord asks me to communicate to you is that your heart be expectant. Expectant. Lord, I expect to be healed. I expect that you will wipe my tears. I expect that this situation in my life will change at once. I expect it. I expect it. Do you believe? Do you expect that God will do something in your life? God is already visiting people. You do not imagine the degree of spiritual preparation that goes in to all of our meetings. Talk less of the miracle service. So I want you to know that there is enough grace. There is enough anointing. Hallelujah. Right away we'll begin to pray and I'll just be moving in the anointing and God will minister to us. Please and please let your heart be expectant. That's the only message the Lord asked me to give us tonight. Expectation. Expectation. Expect that that which you wrote in your prayer request will be answered. Expect that that which you came down. See, don't look at the situation. Just be expectant. Be expectant. The greatest enemy to expectation is your past, your history, your track record of failure, your track record of the seeming shortcomings of God. So every time you expect, you say, but I prayed before, but I fasted before. It says, forgetting the things that are behind, forgetting what happened yesterday or what did not happen yesterday, I press. Everyone say, I press. I press. Hallelujah. Rise up on your feet. We are going to pray. Just for two to five minutes. That's the only message the Lord asked me to bring to us tonight. Expectation. Let there be a, a depth of expectation in your heart. Lift your voice and cry to God. And say, Lord, I am expectant. Pray. Lord, as your power moves and as your spirit is touching men, I am expectant. I came with a hunger. I came for a touch. I came for an encounter. I came with an expectation. Hallelujah. 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 Before we pray, come, Pastor Femi. The Lord says, I should tell you, he's opening you up to a season of wisdom. 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 He's opening you up to strange wisdom. Wisdom. That's what you are receiving. Wisdom. Strong wisdom. He's opening you up to a season of wisdom. That's what you need for the next level of your life. Wisdom. Tremendous wisdom. The wisdom of the spirit. The wisdom of the spirit. The wisdom of the spirit. He's giving you wisdom. He's giving you wisdom. He's giving you wisdom. Lord, I pray that you activate fountains of wisdom in him. Strange order of wisdom. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Wisdom in your decisions. Dimensions of wisdom that you have never seen before. You will make decisions that will accelerate your life. Accelerate ministry. Hallelujah. In one minute, mention everything you came with as a challenge and say, Lord, the time has come for your grace and your power.
Kaparada balada ba kaprende kete bela debo. Shaprando brati setele bagaria da balada ba koprando soto brati shivara. Shembrata kapara kata tabala da ba kaya da balada ba. Shalom, Shalom, Jehovah, Shalom, Shalom. You're welcome in this place. Shalom, Shalom, my Father, Shalom, Shalom. You're welcome in this place. Shalom, shalom. Jehovah, shalom. Shalom. You're welcome in this place. Shalom. Jehovah, shalom. Shalom, shalom. Jehovah, shalom. Shalom. You're welcome in this place. One more time. Shalom, yeah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. We are starting tonight with individuals that God is giving them breakthroughs. Every single one of those individuals will come under the anointing of the Spirit. At the count of three. Just those individuals. One, two, three. Now, now, take it. Take it. Take it. Take it now. That breaker anointing. I release it right now. Right now, right now, right now. All the ones separated for breakthroughs right now. Inside and outside. I release that breakthrough anointing. That breakthrough anointing. Right now, that breakthrough anointing. Right now, shake it, take it, take it, take it. It comes like a mighty rushing wind. The breakthrough anointing, the breakthrough unction. Enough of that level. Enough of that dimension. I speak it. I declare it. I prophesy it, and I release it. Take it. From your belly, out of your belly, let it gush like living waters. Out of your belly, that breaker anointing. In the name of Jesus. Out of your belly, shake it, 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 that breaker anointing. Breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough. struggle I end the struggle I end the struggle by the breakthrough anointing I end the struggle right now I end the struggle right now all over the building I end the struggle right now shaka ba 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 shaka ta ba 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 shaka ta ka ta and broke sekete Elekete bo soto ba, para tari kete bo lo sekete, sekete kete lekete bo, embros kata na kati de bo sha, sekete le koto shia. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. 
Everyone lay your hands on your stomach. Just lay your hands on your stomach. Hallelujah. Lay your hands on your stomach. He said for out of your belly. Something will happen to some people right now. Out of your belly. Just keep your hands there. Father in the name of Jesus. Where are the ones you are separating? Spiritual breakthroughs. Right now. Right now. Uh, right now from your belly from your belly from your belly from your belly in the name of Jesus out of your belly let it flow let it flow living waters living waters living waters new dimensions living waters skatata kapata reketetekete bekata taboskata from your innermost being from your innermost being from your innermost being from your innermost being a busted thought of new wine a busted thought of new wine a busted thought of new wine a busted thought Hallelujah. 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 Sabarada balada bakatia. There are people here right now. Listen. You came here because you are confused. There is no direction. You are trusting God for direction. You have prayed but there is nothing to do. You need direction desperately. Lift your hands. Lord, I pray wherever they are right now, by the light of the Spirit, my Father locates them. Receive direction right now. Receive direction right now. Marital direction. Academic direction. Receive direction. Receive direction. I put it in your spirit by the light of God. I put it in your spirit by the light of God. I put it in your spirit by the light of God. By the light of God. By the illumination of the spirit. Direction. You will hear that voice. You will hear that voice. You will hear that voice saying this is the way you will hear that voice saying this is the strategy you will hear that voice hallelujah hallelujah lift your hands the Lord wants to destroy marital delay this is what is happening right now. Marita, just keep your hands. Just do what I'm telling you to do. Hallelujah. Now hear me. There are people here who God wants to release them into their marital destiny. But there are horns and powers that has kept them down. You may think it's finances or you may think it's this and that. But the enemy has done this. Lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus. Shekete kete, rekete kete, sheke skopa, ma brata kata, embro kata zikete, shokete tete. I release you right now. I release you. I release your family. I release your sisters. That power that has held your marital destiny. Hear the voice of the Lord. That power that has stopped marriage in your family. I speak in the name of Jesus. Be loose right now. 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 Hallelujah. 
Now, lift your hands. I'm seeing in the spirit a tree without fruit. And so I know the Lord wants me to destroy barrenness. 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 There is someone who came here with that situation. I don't know if it's a couple or somebody. You are expecting a miracle desperately. Let me have that one person come out. I'm going to pray for everybody right now, but we need to break that yoke right now. We need to break that yoke right now. There are families tied down. There are families tied down. When you identify that person, the person can come out. Lift your hands, let me pray. No, the Lord wants the family to come out first. Come out first. Celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Where are you coming from, sir? Kaduna. Kaduna. Yes, sir. Where's your wife? She left my house October 26th. We don't have the courage and she packed her things and she left. We were married for eight years, no child. You've been married for eight years no child. with no child. And so because of the frustration, she left. Do you know where she is? She's in Kaduna in her mother's house. Why did she leave? Look at how the devil steps in to destroy families. Eight years and is leaving because there is no child. But are you still in touch? Well, the church tried to call her. She didn't answer. So I left her alone. I was just praying that God should just intervene. So a friend of mine invited me from Kaduna to come to this program. Where is the friend? Friend, come. I need to pray for you. May God bless you. Let's celebrate the friend. Hallelujah. These are the kind of useful and relevant friends that God should bring in your life. Friend, where are you? May God bless you. You are a good friend for inviting him to come and receive breakthrough. do you believe your wife will come back yes sir you want her back yes sir. i'm going to pray for you your wife will return back Amen. forget about what has happened god will give you two boys two girls Hallelujah. Let me pray for you, sir. You are a good man and you love God. Not only that, what do you do? I work in an electronics company, Samsung. So when we had this issue of this marriage, they have to let go of me, but I have my own personal business in Kaduna, which I, know. I God established. Is helping you. Yes, this marriage has destroyed too many things in your life. You've lost money. You've lost a lot of people. Even cars. Lost. Because I'm seeing somebody that really used to be blessed. What is like things are going down. The Lord is going to restore you. Amen. You believe that? You believe that? Yes, sir. Therefore, what God has joined. The Bible says, let no man put asunder. You need to be delivered. Right? There is a spirit that is making these things happen. You are a good man. You will be delivered right now. I curse that spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. I release your destiny right now. In the name of Jesus. I call forth your wife into your life. And I open the fountains of fruitfulness. The Lord showed me two boys, two girls. And I release them to your life. This power that has tied you down and tied your family. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare that it is released right now. In the name of Jesus, I'm holding your hands. And with these hands, may your business jack up beyond that which you have ever known. And I pray in the name of Jesus that the Lord will restore your fortune. And he will bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Friend, come. 
Where are you from? Kaduna too? Zaria. Yeah. Zaria, yeah. You came alone? Yes. No, I came with a friend. What would you want the Lord to do in your life? Marital breakthrough. Marital breakthrough? Yes. What does that mean? Marriage or health yes. in your marriage? Marriage. Marriage. When? This year. You believe it? Yes. Or you're just saying it? You have already spoken the word and it's happening. Let me pray for you. Father, you anointed us to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To appoint unto them. And in the name of Jesus, I declare that before this year runs out, your husband comes to you and may you be happily married. You will marry a godly man. May you marry a blessed man. One who will love you and fear the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you, sir. Now lift your hands and let me pray. I'm praying for barrenness. I don't care what represents barrenness in any area of your life. Lift your hands. Barrenness can mean unfruitfulness in any aspect. It says, Naaman was the captain of the Syrian army, but he was leprous. It was an area of barrenness. Barrenness is that aspect of your life that is not productive. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you right now. Lift your hands. Father, there are people who like a vine have refused to bear fruit in different areas. Others want to bear fruit, but the enemy has stopped it. I pray for you right now. Every power that is sitting on your fruitfulness. Where are those people who barrenness have held their lives? Where are those people? In the name of Jesus, let fire come upon you now. Let fire come upon you now. I destroy the hold of barrenness. Everywhere in this building, I break the chains of barrenness. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This row, can you lift your hands? Just this row. Just this row. Just keep your hands lifted. I see a wind blowing through this row. Barrenness be destroyed from the back to the front. Back to the front. Back to the front. There is no hiding. Back to the front. There are many people in this row. I break it right now. I break it right now. Right now to the back. From the back to the front. 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 To the front. In the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone under any influence of unfruitfulness. Shake it. 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 Right to the back. In the name of Jesus. Be set free. Hallelujah. Now lift your hands. I want to minister deliverance to the oppressed. This sign shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. When the spiritual limitation is taken away, then your life will move forward. What will happen tonight? It's not just for you, but for every family you represent. So there are people who will come under the influence of the anointing to be delivered. Not just for themselves, but for their families and the families you represent. Lift your hands. Father, in the name that is above all names, I'm praying. There are spirits sitting on families and the destinies of people appearing to people in dreams and visions and corrupting your purposes for their lives and lord it's time for them to go because this is mount zion now therefore i speak to every foul spirit 
every devil of darkness every yoke every territorial power that sits across territories I speak in the name of Jesus by the authority of the Lord Jesus and I come under an apostolic anointing I bring every spirit under arrest and I command that you will live at the count of three now at the count of three I want you to shout the name Jesus and they must leave you one two three spirit husband every territorial power ancestral spirits that tie people and families come out now come out now come out now come out of God's people in the name of Jesus bring them out in the name of Jesus I cost those powers I cost those powers I cost those powers I cost those powers hallelujah lift your hands lift your hands I see spirits that come to people in night visions and dreams make intercourse with them and destroy their lives keep those hands lifted Lord where are those people let the sword of judgment find them now let the sword of judgment find them now let the sword of judgment Sisters, lift your hands. A spirit will prefer to oppress a sister than a brother because with one sister there are many people that can become victims not because of immorality or anything it's just the nature the compelling character of women i pray right now anyone here whether you know it or not that is under the influence of any spirit that is not of god i pray and stretch my hands right now in the name of Jesus, let fire come upon that spirit. Let fire come upon that spirit. Come upon that spirit. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is speaking to me that there are people here that start things but never finish. There are families that start things. You've been building a house for 10 years and will never complete it. Lift your hands. The finisher's anointing is going to come upon a few people right now. That grace to start and finish at the count of three is coming upon you for your destiny, coming upon you for your family. Receive it right now. One, two, three. The finisher's anointing breaking the course of delay. The finisher's anointing breaking the yoke of delay. Projects that have refused to finish. Projects that have refused to finish. Hallelujah. I hear the chains 
Hallelujah. Now, for all those who came with sick people, you can march to the front now for prayer. Inside and outside. It's time to pray for the sick. Instrumentalists, give us very anointed tunes. Worship team, help us. While that is happening, if you've not written your prayer request, do that quickly. And in case you think you need to add something to it, please don't stop playing. While you are seated here, the power of God is visiting you. So be in the spirit, inside and outside, no matter how far you are. Connect in the spirit. You can call your loved ones to quickly send in their requests. There is a God that answers prayer. Please make way for those who are coming out. Jesus is the healer. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. of you who have come out I want you to wave goodbye to your infirmities and mean business with it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want you to believe that Jesus still heals and he will heal you right now. Hallelujah. We'll be very fast about it. Yep. Just give her a chair. Hallelujah. All of you standing here, believe that Jesus will heal you right now. He will give us a sign. And the sign will be from one of you. Something will happen to one of you right now. And that will give us the sign of the stirring of the waters. power of God will come strongly upon one of you right now when that happens then it will allow us to pray for the sick right now in abundance thank you Jesus father let there be miracles I see miracles everywhere be discerning be spiritual Miracles everywhere. I see miracles everywhere. Right now, this right now. Miracles everywhere. I see miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere. Right now, right now.
Tell him in the name of Jesus. He will walk well now. And that witchcraft attack will leave. Ask him if he believes. And tell him to what's this? The medical report. Okay. Father, this is why you anointed us. Every power that is not of God, I set you free from it right now. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, you will walk normally by yourself. I release upon you the power that comes in the name of the Lord Jesus. For those of you who have never seen a miracle, watch closely what happens now. Oh, hallelujah. I feel the healing anointing coming upon you. Stomach bloated. Jesus sets you free. I come in the name of the Lord. Tell him to hold my hands. Tell him to hold my hands. Release him. Release him. Walk. Come. Come. Tell him to come. happened to him now. Yes, 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 yes. let me tell you something it's not only settled I pray for you yes, that not only this will happen but God will use you to do this Amen. same thing receive that anointing right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ Baba tell him from today no witchcraft power will paralyze and keep him again I appreciate God. Go back to your seat. God bless you. Oh, oh, oh.
fresh as that of a baby. This thing is not because of guitar. This is witchcraft. The devil does not want you to play onto the glory of God. Oh, you, you want play, to play for a club now, this hand will be healed. The devil is a liar. You Hallelujah. That's how he keeps play robbing guitar. the church of potential people who worship God. Praise the Lord. You believe Jesus will heal you? All this. Look at me. I'm going to pray for you. And the power of God will come upon you. You believe that? And then you move your whole hand and begin to try it. Say after me, Jesus. I believe. I believe. You're the son of the living God. You're the son of the living God. Right now. Right now. Life to my hands. Life to my hands. Say it again. Life to my hands. Life to my hands. Look at what is happening to his hands. cannot move them. Go ahead and begin to move it. Go ahead. Begin to move it. Move it by yourself. Go ahead. Move it. Move it. Start moving your fingers. Look at this. He couldn't move his fingers. Look at this. Go ahead. Go ahead. Do what I'm doing. Hold it like this. Go ahead. Keep moving. Come on. Give Jesus praise. Couldn't use this at all. Couldn't even move. Jesus Christ, I declare that these hands become perfected. Can you see how the hands are? I mean, so stunned, you cannot even use it. Keep doing it. Keep shaking it. The power has gone and your hand recovers completely. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. Give Jesus praise.
Lord. You are the king of a sickness. Over every situation. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 You are God. We cry hallelujah. 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 To him, he will run to us. If we lift our hands, he will lift us up. He will not be Oh, you say, Oh, you say, Can we say it again? If we call to him, he will run to us. Give him a Come now, pray. Praise his name. Oh, he saints of God. Hey, oh, sing for joy to God. Oh, sing for joy. To him, he will answer us. If we run to him, he will run to us. If we lift our head, he will lift us up. Come now, praise his name, oh, you say it's of God. One time, if we call to him, he will run to us. If we run to him, he will run to us. If we lift our head, he will lift us up. Oh, sing, oh, sing, for joy to God. Oh, sing, oh, sing, for joy to God. Oh, sing, for joy, for joy to God. Oh, sing, for joy. Oh, sing, for joy. 
worthy hail hail your name day by day all the way all the way we go to hell hail your name day by day all the way all the way we go to hell What the Lord has done, He has destroyed the works of Satan. He has given us victory. That's why we sing, Oh, say, yeah. Have you heard what the Lord has done? He has destroyed the works of Satan. He has given us the victory. That's why we sing, Oh, say, yeah. I say yeah, yeah. I say yeah. No baba. I say yeah. I say yeah. yeah. You don't win no. Give the Lord a dance and a shout. 
Unto you that answers prayer will all flesh come, O oh God. We have come before the mighty one. I'd like you to pray. There is nothing that our God cannot do. There is nothing he cannot do. Thank you. 
says unto you that answers prayers will all flesh come father this request represent the cries of your people this request represent the desires of your people this request represent the challenges of your people this request represents the obstacles that are standing on our path to destiny this requests threaten the advancement of your kingdom in our lives we pray in the name that is above all names that every request here be turned into a testimony in the name of the lord jesus christ no matter how impossible the situation is oh god i pray that one by one, one by one, they will come and testify of your goodness. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Already for some, I heard that Victor's wife that we prayed for has been rushed to the hospital. Labor has started for her. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This is a very prophetic moment. Please, everybody inside and outside, don't let anyone distract you now. Lift your hands as we speak. Hallelujah. I love this part of the meeting because this is where everybody gets to be blessed. The power of prophecy and its ability to enter your life and change things. Please, I want you to believe. Please, I want you to believe. No matter how far you are inside and outside, I want you to believe. Hallelujah. Everything that represents limitation in your life. Everything that has stood as a limitation against your life and your destiny. I come in the name of the Lord God, the Lord God Almighty, and I declare that in this month of May, may that limitation be lifted up your life. May that limitation be lifted up your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you. Whatever has stopped the helpers of your destiny from locating where you are, whatever wrong advice, whatever wrong impression has been given to them about you and your family that has made them refuse to come to your aid. Makata katakata, shekete ketepaka, emproto sekete lekata, mankratos kataba latapa, rebeke tekete ketepele debos. I call them into your life now in the name of Jesus Christ. I call the helpers of your destiny into your life now. I call the helpers of your destiny into your life now. I call the helpers of your destiny into your life now. hallelujah I pray for you this is the season where wisdom will be required for you to move to the next level listen the Bible says through wisdom a house is built and by understanding it is established through knowledge are the rooms filled with every treasurable thing wisdom for many of us is the key to the next level and this is not human wisdom it's not wisdom by scientific calculation. Strategies that are revealed of the spirit. Strategies that can take you in one day to realms that years have not brought you. I pray the wisdom of the spirit may it come upon you now in the name of Jesus Christ. The wisdom
wisdom for the next dimension the wisdom for the next dimension the wisdom for the next dimension receive it in the name of Jesus hallelujah one of the keys to a life of stagnation is confusion lack of direction there's nothing as terrible as a man who is clueless about what to do it can be frustrating when you are clueless you are at the middle of an ocean and you don't know what to do but there is the spirit of counsel and mind the, the dimension of the operation of the spirit that comes and speaks peace to you in the name that is above all names I pray for you that every decision you need to make every direction that you need to take for this second half of your life to truly be the year of the rain I release upon you that dimension of the spirit of counsel and might marital direction financial direction academic direction career direction no more confusion no more confusion no more confusion hallelujah i pray for you part of the keys to stepping into the blessings of the lord is the ability for your eyes to see opportunities hagar listen hagar was in a place it was a desert but there was water her eyes could not see it. but when the angel of the lord appeared unto her suddenly she saw water i pray you have been passing what can bless you and you have not been seeing it in this month of may man brought us the anointing that opens the eyes of men to opportunities that can bless you i release it upon you now i release it upon you now where men see obstacles may you see opportunities where men see stumbling blocks may you see stepping stones in the name of jesus the bible says god has not given us the spirit of fear fear has kept many people from moving forward fear of everything fear of death fear of failure fear of taking action fear of moving even when god says move you say i'm afraid start that business i'm afraid take a step to marry i'm afraid do this i'm afraid move on further i'm afraid i pray for you in the name of jesus every manifestation of fear every manifestation of fear that has kept your ego on the line that will not allow you soil your hand in destiny to make progress that keeps you from being afraid every manifestation of fear that gives you a feeling of being embarrassed to take a step i cause that fear now i cause that fear now i cause that fear now When they got to the Red Sea, they were afraid. And when Moses went before the Lord, he said, tell the people to move forward. The signs don't go before you. They follow you. You will have to take a step as a sign that you trust God. Take the step and die taking it. Let it be that it was God that killed you. There is no man that took a step in the name of the Lord that did not return with a testimony. For some may trust in horses others may trust in chariots but for us we trust in the name of the Lord and everything we do in the name of the Lord he said whatsoever you do in word and in deed do it in the name of the Lord I pray for you again fear has stopped millionaire businesses from starting up fear has stopped people from applying in places high places they think they are not qualified fear 
has stopped many of us. Fear has stopped you from starting the building project. Who said you are too young? So long as God gives you the signal, there are some of us, all of us are adults in our house, but our parents cannot boast of even a simple bungalow because of fear. You have 10,000. Go and buy a trip of sand and pour it on the ground and leave it here. Tell the devil I'm coming. Look, let me tell you, you will never break through in life till you take the attitude of if I perish, I perish. I pray the boldness, the audacity, the strength, the audacity to ride through without exhaustion, to ride through without fear, I release it upon you right now. I release it upon you right now. I pray for your academics. Shekete palabata. The ten times better anointing. Ma teke 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 ta. Shekete lepa. The distinguishing anointing. I release it upon you right now. I release it upon you right now. Listen. Anyone here or any family here that the devil is eyeing for death that is saying you will not see the next month or the end of this year I declare by the mystery of the blood the last card the hallmark of God's victory I judge the manifestation of death over your life I judge the manifestation of death over your family you will travel out and come back safe no armed robber will get you on the road no terrorist will attack you on the road when others say there is a casting down it will never be your testimony for you it will be that there is a lifting up in the name of Jesus I pray over your finances the grace to pay the price now and to pay the price early for a glorious financial future I release it every spirit of laziness every spirit of carelessness every spirit of lukewarmness every inertia every reluctance to begin to take appropriate financial decisions especially for the brothers i cause it to his root now in the name of jesus christ i pray for those trusting god for a miracle job I tell you the truth when the hand of the Lord upon you is upon you there will be a door that is open some of you are standing in for yourself and some for your loved ones I pray in the name that is above all names may God give them supernatural jobs jobs that they will be proud of in the name of Jesus and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren it's one thing to be rich is one thing to be blessed but it's another thing to be honored honor is not something that money can buy i pray for you that mantle of honor that makes you distinguished and rewarded everywhere you go i release it upon you right now your superiors will honor you your contemporaries will honor you your subordinates will honor you even your enemies will honor you in the name of Jesus Christ and I pray for everything that has died or is dying here I don't care what it is projects that have died ideas that have died dreams that have died I speak to you in the name of Jesus come back to life come back to life visions that have died assignments that have died passions that have died strengths that have died I call it back to life in the name of Jesus every voice you have heard that has killed your dreams every voice you have heard that has killed your potentials the voice of your past the voice of your failure the voice of mediocre the voice of limitation I silence those voices from your life I silence those voices from your life. I pray for every ministry represented here. Greater grace. 
and greater glory greater grace and greater glory i pray for every business represented here greater grace and greater glory i pray for every job represented here greater grace and greater glory i pray for every family represented here greater grace and greater glory i pray for every destiny represented here greater grace and greater glory greater grace and greater glory greater grace and greater glory the bible says thou anointest my head with oil and it makes my cup to run over there is an anointing that comes upon your head that translates into increase in your life thou anointed my head with oil and that oil makes my cup my source of supply to run over i pray for you the anointing that will give you wisdom the anointing that will give you creativity the anointing that will give you ideas insight concepts strategies for wealth i release it upon your life in the name of jesus christ and i pray for you in a name that is above all names every habit every issue every challenge every weight on your life that is eating up your christian integrity that is eating up your walk with god you love god but there are weights in your life that keep drawing you back to the way of sin i pray for you the hand of the lord lifts you out of that nonsense the grace of God picks you out of that limitation. Grace to say no to every appearance of evil. Grace to say no to everything that is ungodly. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray a special prayer for our brothers. I curse in your life the spirit of irresponsibility. One more time. I curse from your life and your vicinity. Every spirit that refuses you from rising as a man that you are that entitlement mentality that makes you think someone else is responsible for your success i cast that mindset in the name of jesus from today i release upon you grace grace to rise and take up the challenge of manhood in the name of jesus christ i pray for you you will not need to defend yourself the Lord God Almighty will be your defense. The Lord will anoint you in such a way that even your enemies will walk towards your progress. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy restoration for everything you have lost. Restoration, 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 restoration. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And I pray for you, a new dimension in the spirit. A new level of prayer grace a new level of word grace a new dimension of encounters with the Spirit of God where you are becoming lukewarm where you are losing the initial standard of your Christian experience where you are already bending bending against the things that would make you powerful I pray for a restoration for you where you have lost the voice of the spirit i command that you be to hear his voice again where you have lost zeal for the house of god i command a restoration for you in the name of the lord jesus christ and i pray for you all through the remaining part of may into june let it be a month of testimonies for you beginning from tonight in the name of jesus christ all those who have been looking for you to bless you may this be the season they find you all those who have received instructions from god to hold your hands and lift you up with no strings attached but have not been able to find you i pray listen listen samuel had already been ordained i mean saul ordained to be a king but he needed to find samuel and they kept searching and he could not find samuel until by the wisdom of God they were able to find him you can be one anointing away from the next level of your life you can be one prophetic impartation away you can be one destiny helper away I pray again for you 
whoever has been looking for you like the lost ass of Samson of, of Saul whoever has been looking for you to bless you and has not found you may this be the season they find you in the name of Jesus Christ and finally I pray for you nothing will rob your joy this month this will be the month of June will be for you a month of joy and laughter in the name of Jesus Christ before miracle service next month most of all your prayer requests would have been turned into testimonies in the name of Jesus thank you for lifting thank you for lifting Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. My yeah. Hallelujah. Now, keep standing, everybody. You're here and you need to return back to Jesus Christ. Keep standing, everyone. You've heard the word of the Lord and you know that you need to make it right with Jesus. Maybe this is the first time you are running to Jesus genuinely to commit your life to Him. Or you've once given your life to Jesus and you've seen that you are derailing and you need to make it right tonight. We will not end this meeting without giving you an opportunity to make Jesus Lord of your life or rededicate your life. Wherever you are, make your way to the front right now. We have one minute for this. God bless you. God bless you as you come. God bless you as you come. Don't wait for anybody to be the first to come. Make your way. God bless you. God bless you. They are coming inside and outside. Celebrate them, Koinonia. God bless you as you come. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. God bless you as you come. Don't be ashamed. He will give you a new beginning. And he will supply grace. That you will go higher and higher. Higher and higher. Keep coming. Young and old, keep coming. Run to Jesus. Keep coming. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Don't sit back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for coming. To make a decision for Jesus. Just raise your right hand. And repeat after me. Consciously and from the depth of your heart. You are not reciting a poem. This is, this is a confession that brings salvation unto you. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I declare from today that you are my Savior and you are my Lord. I receive of your life. I receive of your spirit. And I declare that from today, my sins are washed away. I am a brand new person. The hand of God is upon me. I receive grace to live the victorious Christian life. In the name of Jesus Christ, everything that is not of God, I take authority over it. I receive grace from God to live a victorious Christian life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. I want to congratulate you for making this decision. It's the best decision you can make. This decides your eternal destiny. Hallelujah. Now, I'd like you to follow the gentleman waving his hands. They will have your details. They will welcome you more warmly. And then, we'll communicate to you through them. God bless you. This way. Draw that baby. Baby, this way. No, 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 no. All those who are worshipping with us for the first time, if this is your first time being here worshipping with us at Koinonia, please make your way to the front. You are most welcome. You are most welcome. Celebrate them as they come. God bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Come on, Koinonia. You can do better than this. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them because we
they know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain.